Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Fondelier here. I really miss seeing all of you guys. I wish we were in person, but I appreciate you guys getting on for your Sunday school lesson. So let's just open in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for another week gone by. Thank you for providing and um, for being near even during these hard times. I just ask you to be with us as we open your word and as we go through this lesson, continue to be with each of these families, strengthen them, guide them, lead them, and guide us in all wisdom and knowledge. In your name we pray, amen. All right, so our Bible story today takes place in 1 Samuel of the Old Testament. The Bible, remember, is 100% true. And God gave us the Bible so that we could know him. And the Bible has two parts, as you guys know, because you're all smart, the Old Testament and the New Testament. So the book of 1 Samuel is in the Old Testament, and it's in the part of the Bible called the historical books. The historical books are the books that share about prophets and kings and the story of God's people, the Israelites. God provided Hannah, who had prayed for a baby, with a son named Samuel. I'm sure you remember that story. Hannah promised to dedicate Samuel to serving God. So Eli, the priest, raised Samuel. And Eli had two sons, but they had no regard for God. And his command. So our Bible story today tells us about when Eli's sons took the Ark of the Covenant into battle against the Philistines and the Ark was captured. So I wonder if you have ever had to follow a map to get somewhere or use a set of directions to make something. What would happen if you didn't know where you were going and you ignored the directions on the map and you took a shortcut. You might get lost, probably would, right? If, and what about if you were building something and you tossed all the instructions out the window and you just thought, I'll figure it out. Well, instead of building it the right way, you just taped it all together because you thought that was quicker. It probably wouldn't turn out so right. Well, sometimes we are tempted to take shortcuts in life and do things our own way, but that can get a little bit messy. The truth is that God knows best, and when we follow Him and respect His directions, then things always turn out better. Trying to do things our own way will not be best for us. So let's hear a story about people in the Bible who tried to do things their own way. Hey guys, I'm Kristen. I'm Tristan. I'm Lucy. And we're here to do Bible Story Challenge! That's where we take a mystery material and use it to tell our Bible story. So today's story is Travels of the Ark from 1 Samuel, chapters 4 through 6. You guys ready to spin the wheel? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Candy! Oh, we got candy! candy. Okay, I guess we'll go get our materials and we'll be right back. <laughs> okay guys, we're back and we've got all of our stuff here to tell our story. It looks so delicious. What are you guys most excited to eat? Joey beans. And the, lobby, the lollipops. Mmm, it all looks really good. Well, we are going to tell our story and it's going to be a lot of fun. So here we go. The story of Travels of the Ark from 1 Samuel chapters 4 through 6 told through the use of candy. Now. God's people, the Israelites, were battling with a neighboring group of people called the Philistines who loved to give the Israelites trouble. And they had just had a battle where 4,000 Israelite soldiers had died and the Philistines had totally won. And the Israelites were totally freaking out. <laughs> so they decided to talk to each other and they said, what can we do to make this go better? And they had an idea. They decided that they were going to send for the Ark of the Covenant to come and go with them into battle. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was a very special box 
that God had instructed his people to make that was a symbol of his presence and it was to be treated very, very specially, more specially really than going into battle. But they sent for it and here it was at the Israelite camp and when they all saw it, they cheered! And the Philistines all heard them. We'll move some of the soldiers out of the way. They heard them and they wondered what was going on. And then they heard that the Ark of the Covenant was here and it made them totally freak out. Ah! They were totally freaking out because they knew how powerful God was and they felt like if the Ark of the Covenant was there, they were so sure they were gonna lose. They said, let's fight harder than we've ever fought before. And so they went into battle and they battled and they battled and the Israelites totally lost. There was like, yeah, even more soldiers lost than before. And not only that, the Ark of the Covenant got taken by the Philistines. Super bad news. That was super, super terrible for the Israelites. So the Philistines, they took the Ark of the Covenant. All right, let's see if you can bring it back over this way. To a temple. And in that temple, there was a big idol statue thing there to the Philistine god Dagon. And the Philistines brought it there. They were so happy. And then they all went to sleep for the night. And the next morning when they went in, to see the temple, their big giant statue was knocked over flat. Ah, there we go, he's all flat and he was bowing down. It looked like he was bowing down to the ark. So the Philistines were totally freaking out. Ah! So, but they decided they would set the statue back up again and then they would go to sleep that night again. But then when they came in the next day, they saw not only was the statue all the way knocked over, but the head was off and the hands were off too. Put way far away from where they were. And the Philistines were totally freaking out. Ah! Ah! Then they all started to get this terrible sickness. It was awful. They were getting sick and they were dying and it was really, really bad. And so they thought we better do something. And they decided to move the Ark of the Covenant out of that town. And they moved it to a different Philistine town. So let's pretend this is a different Philistine town here. So they moved it to another Philistine town and all the people there got sick and they were totally freaking out. And they decided they'd better move it to a different Philistine town. So let's pretend this is another Philistine town. And all the people there got sick too. And they were totally freaking out. Ah! And then the Philistines got together. They said, we've got to do something about this. They started talking to each other. They realized they needed to just send the Ark of the Covenant back to the Israelites. That was the only way that they were going to be free of all of this craziness. So they sent the Ark of the Covenant back to the Israelites. And that is our story of Travels of the Ark from 1 Samuel chapters four through six, told through the use of candy. We've had so much fun getting to tell our Bible story today. And we just wanted to say, thanks for watching. Oh yeah, looks very good. Okay, so what happened in that story? What happened to God's people? God sent judges and prophets to help his people, the Israelites. And one of those prophets was Samuel, who was raised by Eli, the priest. When the Israelites were defeated in a battle against the Philistines, Eli's sons decided to take matters into their own hands and make sure the Israelites would win the next battle. So what did they do? What did they take into the battle to make sure they would win? Well, you saw it. They took the Ark of the Covenant into battle. They thought that if they took the Ark with them, that they would win. They were taking a shortcut and going into battle their own way and not God's way. 
So what is the Ark of the Covenant and why is it important? Well, years before, you probably remember that God commanded Moses to build the large box out of acacia wood and cover it in gold. Inside it were the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, Moses' staff and a jar of manna. The Ark symbolized God's presence and his provision for the Israelites, for his people. It was so special that the people weren't even allowed to touch it or even look inside it. They weren't supposed to carry it into battle or move it around anywhere without God's leading. So the Israelites took it thinking that it would give them the upper hand in the battle and help them to win, but that did not happen. In fact, as you saw, they were only defeated again. The Ark was captured by their enemies, the Philistines. It was taken back into the Philistine territory where it was kept for seven months and before, before the Philistines finally returned it to the Israelites. And why? Why did they bring it back to the Israelites? Because God was bringing destruction upon their people for, for taking it. Every place the Philistines took the Ark, God caused physical pain and illness to the people. When the Philistines placed the ark in the temple of their idol, Dagon, God caused Dagon to actually fall over and break apart. God had shown his power and that the ark belonged with his people. The Philistines were, of course, terrified, and they knew that they did not want this in their land. So they sent it back to the Israelites. So the Ark of the Covenant belonged to God's people. So why would God let the Philistines have it for that long? So while the Ark of the Covenant was for the Israelites, they were not following God's commands. God is always with his people, but that does not mean that things turn out the way we expect all the time. The Israelites thought that just having the Ark would guarantee their victory. They were going to battle with their own plan rather than having God lead them. The Israelites thought that just having the ark would guarantee victory. They were going into battle with their own plan rather than having God lead them. So what can we remember from this story? What's the point? What's the application? What does that mean for us today? Well, the Israelites took matters into their own hands to try to get God's favor in battle. They knew they weren't supposed to take the Ark of the Covenant into battle. Instead, they had to watch it being captured. They were defeated and they lost the Ark of the Covenant. It may have seemed as though God had abandoned them completely, but the Ark was returned. We can trust that, God, that because God is all powerful, he has a plan for all of us, just as he had for the Israelites. When we're tempted to take shortcuts and do things our own way, we can remember that God's way is always better. So you have met, maybe boys and girls have heard the gospel in church. The gospel is the good news, right? It's everyone wants the good news. And, it, and we're not to miss out on this invitation that Jesus came, that he died for your sins, and that he rose from the dead, and that he saved each and every one of us if we call upon his name. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this time and for your word, which is true and sharper than any two-edged sword. I just pray, Lord, that you would help these children to meditate on your word and to accept you as Lord and Savior of their life. Help them to call upon you and to need you more than anything. Be with us as we go through this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Craft Time. And this week, Miss Evelyn has really kicked it up a notch. So not only are we going to be um, doing this project here, which is in your little packets, it is a um, picture of the Ark of the Covenant. And you guys have been learning about the tabernacle and all the items that are in it. And this one is super special. And the one thing that she wanted to emphasize on this one is that it's all made out of gold. It was made out of wood, but then it was overlaid with gold and solid gold cherubim and things. So 
we are going to do everything gold today. So all the things that you have in your um, bag, we're going to put to use. So the first thing I think I would encourage you all to do is if you have never used your gold color crayon in your box, now's the time to get it out. So I would say find it if you don't have it, of course, this darker yellow or whatever yellow. And I went ahead and just kind of colored and because everything was gold, you want to cover everything with the yellow or the gold or whatever you have. So you would just go ahead and and color over everything. You don't have to do these if you don't want to because we have something else in the packet that we're gonna use for those. So I would just say, um, I'm just gonna color their heads a minute and their arms because that's about the only thing we're gonna need gold today for the, those, but we're gonna add to it. All right, so once you get all that base color on there, stay in the lines if you can. All right, the next thing you wanna um, find is this little teeny muffin cup. And all I did with this, you can do two different things. I flattened it out and I folded it in half and then you can just cut it, all right? And you can do one of two things. Once you cut it in half, you can leave it in half and just kind of bend it, all right? Because these are gonna become the wings of our angel, all right? Or you can cut it into fours. So once you cut it in half, you could cut it in half again and you can place them anywhere you want. And you're just simply going to glue those on. So I covered over. We'll see if that, yep, that works good. All right, we're going to put it on our angel wings. These are the two pieces. So I'm just going to use the two pieces on this. Kind of lay one there, one there. If you want to leave it as one piece, I just kind of tucked it and folded it. Again, you can do whatever you want. You can cut it into more than one piece if you want. And I'm just going to stick some glue on that, and then I'm going to set it on here. All right. So, so far I've got my angel wings, and they're gold. There's gold everywhere. Now, the next part, um, I would go ahead, and there's a piece of gold sparkly ribbon, okay? That is to go across the top, right where the angels are sitting on the, the lid, I guess. This could be considered the top of your lid. You just want to put a piece of glue on that. You can cut it to fit the size you want, or you can leave it the, whatever's in there. Okay, so we got still got our gold going on. And the next part is the fun part, okay? So I would get out a piece of paper or some wax paper or a newspaper or anything like that and lay your um, five sticks. You should have five gold sticks. And the idea is not to put a lot of glue because we're gonna glitter. You saw the glitter coming. And that's the fun part. And I would just put one little thin line. If you put too much, one, it's gonna take forever to dry, and two, it just makes a big mess. So we're just gonna kind of put a little thing, get your finger on there, get all slimy, get sticky. And if you ever have ever let the glue dry on your finger and then you peel it off, that's fun too. So just remember you can do that while you're waiting. All right, then I just took them and I took the glitter, leave all of the sticks on there. Carefully open up your glitter. And then you're just gonna shake it all across there. Or you can use your fingers and pinch it across there. But I, I think shaking it works just as good. And then if you keep it on the paper, it keeps it all in one place. Okay, so we do that. And I would let it sit just for a minute or two. You can kind of pat it down on there, get as much as you can. All right. And then as that's drying, then I would come back over, put, again, just a little bit of glue goes a long way. Actually, the less glue you use, the faster it sticks. All right, so I've got one done here. So we're just gonna lay that down there. And then these ones you can kind of just tap, put them across. And I was thinking about this glitter and about the Ark, and I was thinking how in this lesson, the Ark of the Covenant was a representation that God was always with them and that he was always around for them. It's kind of going to be like what your glitter is going to be after you're done with this project. It's going to be around for a long time, so you'll see it everywhere on everything. So just kind of make that analogy. But this is the project. I've got one that's already dry, so I'm going to hold this one up. But this is what it all comes to. It's got gold, it's got glitter, it's got 
um, shiny, but um, this is what you will do uh, to complete the um, Ark of the Covenant. Uh, it's all covered in gold. And again, when you're done, you can just take your paper and fold it up and put it back in the container. Um, I hope you have fun with this because she doesn't always put glitter in and it's a lot of fun. All right, so you guys uh, have fun and we will see you next time.